Welcome to video number seven in my GAP and Nunjak series. Today we'll have a look at macros and how you can use them to extract even more code from your templates. Now macros are similar to functions in other programming languages as they also allow you to provide parameters to them. Uh, we'll now look at the footer partial on my homepage which you might remember from a previous video and I'll use macros to further or to extract further code. And the goal here is not to make those macros specific for the footer, but to create generic macros, which I could also use in other parts of the homepage. Let's have a look now. So this is currently how the footer looks like, the footer partial to be more specific. So we extracted it in a previous tutorial and yeah, we're using for loop here. We're using some variables which we check in the loop. So to have a different behavior, a different markup, depending on if it's the first element or the last element, one element in between. So this is what we already covered. Now we want to see if there's some code in it or yeah, if we could make this here more generic, especially this part. And we're gonna use macros for that. So first thing, I want to create a folder which I call macros down here. And the macros are not specific for German or English. In my opinion, the macros should be very generic functions. So not even specific for the footer. So if we look at this for here, this for loop, what does it do? It's just listing some links. Another thing here, we have some spaces and we, we use this code a couple of times. So just inserting a number of spaces. In this case, it's four spaces. What if we make this a macro? A macro which we call insert spaces. Yeah, let's just do that because I think that's an easy example to start with. So I create a macro down here in the macros and I call it insert spaces nunjax. Now to define a macro, we simply do this typical start here, curly braces percent, then macro, and then the name of the function or the macro and we call it just insert spaces. And now what we can do for macro, we can provide parameters. And this looks just like a function call, like you'd have it in JavaScript or Java. And yeah, what we pass in here are the number of spaces. So that's basically the start of the macro. We also have to close it. Now to be a bit more consistent with the naming of our variable here, we'll use the underscore naming instead of this camel case. And that's just because the other variables in the pages, for example, all use this scheme. So variables are just named like this to be consistent. But yeah, you can do anything here. This is nothing which is specified. It's just something you specify for yourself. Okay, so now the macro, what do we have? This here is passed in as a variable. So what we can now do is we can use a for loop to insert spaces. Let's just do that. Now, if you remember before when we were using the for loop, what we always had was an array over which we were iterating. And yeah, this is what Nunjax basically needs. So for other languages, what you could do now, you could do for i equals zero, i smaller than number of spaces, i plus plus, for example, but that's not possible in Nunjax. You have to give it an array or a range. And this is what we're gonna do for i in, and now we call this range function. And we define the range going from zero to number of spaces. And now this will work. We have to close the for loop. And in the for loop, for every iteration, we just print a space here. Now let's go to the footer and make use of this macro. What we have to do is we have to import it. So at the top, we just call from. Now we go up to the macros and get the insert spaces, nunjax. And then we import. And what we import is insert spaces. So this is similar to the import or require in JavaScript where you access a file and then import a certain function. Now I think I forgot something here because we're actually in the subfolder parts, which means we have to go up two directories. 
Okay, so now this insert spaces is available here and we can use it. And we use it by calling it inside double curly braces. And we call it with four because we want to have four spaces. And now we can do it for the other places here. Let's just do that. Control Shift L to replace all of them. And now if we run Gulp, Hopefully it should still work and we should still have the spaces. Let's see what happens. Now let's head over to some of the created pages. For example, here the index. Scroll to the bottom and see how this currently looks. So here we still have all the spaces. There's also a lot of new lines in here. So this doesn't look so clean as before anymore, but that's okay because we'll run a cleanup or prettier script afterwards, which is also something which I'll show you in the next tutorial. For now, the only important thing is that our macro was good enough to insert four spaces wherever we called it. Now I think we can do more with this footer. Let's have a look. You see here, this is the English footer, but we also have a German footer and it looks nearly the same as the English one. So there's just some different code up here. So here it's the English version, here's some German. And then here for the German, we iterate over this array of German links and here in English over this array of English links. So that's really the only difference here. And if we make this whole for loop also a macro to which we could maybe provide this array and also a number of spaces and maybe also here the spacer, I think we could create a very generic link item list. Let's just do that. Create a new macro down here. We call it link item list. So kind of a generic name because we could also use it somewhere else. So just a horizontal list of links. So let's take this for loop, copy it to the link item list and put this inside a macro definition and also close it. Now you see here in this macro, we call this insert spaces. And that's a nice thing about Nunjax. You can import other macros from this, which we're gonna do now. Just copy over this part here and put it at the top. So we can call this macro inside of this macro. Now, what do we want to pass in? For one thing, the number of spaces goes in and we're gonna use it wherever we're having this for. What we also want to change or be able to change is this spacer here. So let's just make this also a variable and input. Just call it spacer and replace this one here. So that's it, but not really. We also have to pass in this array. And what this really is, those are the link items. So let's call it link items and pass it in as a third parameter here. Now this code here, this is finished. Now we have to call it in footer. So let's go there. We no longer import this insert spaces here. We import the link item list and we import link item list function from this macro. And what we can now do we can just remove this whole code here, call the macro and we call it with the spacer, the number of spaces and the English footer array. Now let's run this and we get an error here. So it seems I used the wrong path here. Let's head to the item link list. So here we're no longer going up to directories, we now import this insert spaces from the same folder. So let's just do that. Fix the folder here, run gulp again, and now it works. Let's head over to the index, go to the bottom, and we still see the footer. Now to show you why this was now useful, let's just copy this code here over to the German footer. So we can remove this whole part here. Here we just pass in the German array. Also, we have to import the macro, copy and paste the code here from the top. Yeah, now this is really clean. So the footer for the German and 
for the English. They look nearly the same, they just have some different wording here. So this is English, here we have the German and then they are different in that the German one pushes in the German array into the link item list and the English one pushes in the English array into the link item list. So we have created some very reusable code here and you could imagine this link item list, I could use it in other parts of the homepage also. Wherever I just want to have a simple list of links where I want to have maybe some spacer or not even a spacer, I could remove it now easily. And also I could change the number of spaces, just making it two for example. Let's run this again. Have a look at the index. Now you only have two spaces. We no longer have the spacer. So it's really flexible now and I can do this for other parts of the homepage too. But I think as a first introduction to how to use macros and why to use them, this is sufficient now. So I hope you like this tutorial. And yeah, as I said already in the next video, we're gonna tackle this structure here, which now looks a little bit ugly. So a lot of empty lines. Also here, the formatting is not right. In the next video, I show you how to create a custom gulp plugin. So what we have down here in the gulp file, we already use some plugins like Nunjax render, but after the render is finished, before we write it, what we want to do, apply some prettier to format all the markup which comes out of this render. But this is for the next video. Till then, see you.